Welcome back to the channel where we explore, learn, and theorize about the Marvel Universe. Today I'll be talking about Topher Grace in Spider-Man No Way Home, new details for Armor Wars, and an exciting look towards the future of the MCU. Now let's get started. Venom Let There Be Carnage is 1 hour and 30 minutes long, but at the same time, it isn't an hour and 30 minutes long. Now let me explain. Previously people thought that the movie was an hour and 30 minutes, including credits and post credit scenes. However, that's not entirely true. The movie that's been sent to theaters is actually an hour and 30 minutes long. So the full length of the movie with Venom vs Carnage is an hour and 30 minutes long, and the credits are about another 7. Also, it turns out the delays for the movie didn't completely end, as Japan has apparently delayed the movie 2 months. They're looking at a December release, but it could be longer, and the same is actually happening in a few other international markets. So if you live in the US, you're fine, the movie comes out on October 1st. If not, then you might want to check your local theaters just to be sure. But who the heck cares about any of this? Topher Grace, who played Venom in Spider-Man 3, responded to a fan asking him if he was going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home, and he said, please keep it between us. But yes, I am in it. The plot starts with Peter Parker bummed that everyone knows his identity, and then some crazy stuff happens with Doctor Strange, and Doctor Octopus comes into his dimension. Then Electro and Green Goblin hop out of one of those energy circles, and they're like, it's spider stomping time. Then Tom Hardy and I pop out and battle each other, and I win obviously. It's not even a fight, I just kick his butt immediately. Not to give too much away, but there are also some actors from the original 70s Spider-Man show, Aquaman and Batman, Affleck, not Keaton. And thanks to Disney, Han Solo's Ghost from Rise of Skywalker and that Eve robot from Wally. Again, please keep it between us. And this is amazing, I never would have expected all of those characters to appear in the movie. But at this point, we have like 70 different characters from like 5 different franchises, so it makes me wonder, is it really even a Spider-Man movie anymore? Next, Main Middleman tweeted, Here's what I've heard so far about Armor Wars. It'll feature the return of some core Iron Man characters, Morgan, Pepper, and Harley Keener. We'll learn more about Rhodes, which should be one of the main plots. We'll also learn what happens to the Pot Stark family after Tony's death. There will be an initial formation of the West Coast Avengers, Vision, and other familiar faces are expected to make an appearance. From everything I've heard, it'll be a very intense and immersive series along the lines of the MCU, and it will feature Zeke Stain. Now let me break this down a bit. We know that the story will focus on Rhodey, Ironheart will appear and alongside Harley Keener will probably be the ones that fix his suit and possibly even help him on missions, with Keener hopefully donning the Iron Lad suit. The West Coast Avengers normally consist of characters like Vision, the Scarlet Witch, and Hawkeye, which could be where Clint Barton goes if he doesn't fully retire after the Hawkeye Disney Plus show. As for Vision, it's going to be the White Vision, since we heard rumors when the show was first revealed that he would be in it, and White Vision disappeared after WandaVision, but the Scarlet Witch most likely won't appear as she's dealing with Doctor Strange, the Darkhold and her new Nexus powers, her kids, and maybe even Mephisto. As for the villains, we now know that Zeke Stain, the son of Obadiah Stain, the villain from Iron Man 1 will appear. And we've also heard names like the Crimson Dynamo making his MCU debut, which makes sense as he was teased in Black Widow, and also Justin Hammer, who was the main villain in Iron Man 2, and was seen again in prison during the All Hail the King one shot. And lastly, according to Disney CEO Bob Chapek, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings will be available to rent in October, which is 45 days after its theater release. And then a month after that on November 12th, it'll be free on Disney+. Plus. It was also revealed that on the same day, November 12th, Marvel will have a special title celebrating the Marvel Cinematic Universe on Disney+, Plus with an exciting look towards the future. And hopefully this will be another event like we got last December, where Kevin Feige came out and announced a bunch of new shows and movies, as we already know all the shows and movies releasing next year in 2022. So this could show us everything coming in 2023, and maybe even 2024. But let me know what you guys think about all this. How excited are you for Venom 2? Is Armor Wars a show that you're interested in? And what do you think will be revealed on November 12th? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you'll never miss another video. Thanks for watching, and remember to wash your hands and stay safe.